So the standard problem um, that's been given to animals to test whether they understand something about the, the causality of their tools is, is this, it's the, the trap tube. Um, so what you have is a horizontal tube and um, an animal has to um, avoid pushing food towards the trap and instead it has to pull it away from the trap to get the food out. And what we do is we give them lots of experience with this, uh, this trap tube and blocks of 10 trials and we randomly reverse the position of the trap which, which means that they can't learn to always just come from one side and pull because sometimes the trap's going to be on this side. So what we did was present our crows with this initial uh, tube and we found that um, uh, out of six crows, three were able to learn to solve the problem within 150 trials. So we want to know now how are they solving the problem? So we change uh, the characteristics of the trap tube to begin with. First, in our first transfer, we took away the, the discs, uh, just leaving the blue rim. So now the uh, crows have to pull away from the blue rim, but these two arbitrary cues here that don't mean anything uh, have now been removed. So if they just learnt to do something because of learnt associatively about one particular arbitrary cue, then they should fail. And we find that these three grows continue to avoid the trap. So okay, um, they could still obviously have been using the, the blue rim. Um, that's still there. And it's a very obvious cue to use to solve the problem. So in our next transfer, we remove the blue rim and we put back the discs, but this time the discs are black. Um, and we find that again, the crows continue to solve the problem. So at this point we thought, oh, there's something maybe interesting going on here, you know, um, because they're not using any single cue, any single feature of the problem in order to solve it. However, they still could have been using kind of two cues independently. So um, if they'd learned both about to like pull towards this disc and pull away from the rim, if these were independent cues, um, then when we take away one, they still got the other one which they use and, and vice versa for those two transfers. So then we put two holes into the tube um, and we put a, a trap base to only one of them because we wanted to see um, whether the crows would prefer to use um, the obvious cue, the trap base, which had remained, or if they were confused by the two holes because the holes are kind of causal features. They're um, an important part of the problem because they actually do something. Um, so what we found was that when there's two holes there, the crows got really um, uh, reluctant to pull it, uh, the food into either of the, the tubes, so they were, they were either of the holes, sorry. They were really reluctant to pull the food into either of the holes, so they spend a lot of time pushing to here and then coming back and moving the food to here without pulling into either hole. So this suggested to us that the, they really kind of learned something about holes, um, either that they just learned to avoid them or maybe more, they've learned something more, um, more interesting. Maybe they've actually learned um, like a regularity in the world that maybe objects only move horizontally along a continuous surface. So then we gave the crows the trap table. Now this problem looks completely different from the trap tube. It was a, a wooden box uh, with two uh, pieces of food in and there was um, a, uh, a trap, a hole in front of one piece, one of the pieces of meat when there was a continuous surface in front of the other. Now, the trap tube differed in the material. It was made out of wood, this is made out of perspex. It differed in color. The trap tube is brown. This is obviously see-through. Um, and it differed completely in shape as well. This is a circular tube and the, the trap table was a, a box. So, the ability to kind of transfer uh, knowledge when there's no perceptual cues, when there's no visual cues that are similar, um, it is kind of a has been used in our field as a, a nice test of kind of higher cognition because maybe it's requiring some abstract concepts there of what a hole is. It's not just a circle in a perspex tube, but it can be all kinds of different shapes and sizes. The important thing is a hole. And when we gave the, the trap table to our crows, really surprisingly from the very first trial they were avoiding it. All three crows on the first trial avoided the, the, the hole um, and they continued to do so. This was, um, as I say, surprising because that kind of suggests that what the crows had actually done was 
extract some kind of causal regularity that they'd understood some kind of rule in the world that you know objects will only move um, along a continuous surface, not they won't move along a, a hole in the same way. Um, so what that leads us to suggest is that right from the very first tube, they were using this kind of causal relation, and they used this causal relation across all the permutations that we gave them of the of basically of understanding something about the whole, and that then in order to have transferred to the trap table, they must have been using analogical reasoning. What our results really don't aren't saying is that the that the crows think um, ex in exactly the same way as humans. Um, what we found was that um, they had they seemed to understand something about how uh, holes work, but we on our third transfer I, I mentioned that when there were two holes the crows got really confused and they didn't understand that one hole had a base and one hole didn't. So a human if you give that problem to they're gonna say oh I should pull it out this way because it's gonna fall through the hole and I get it. The crows didn't do that. A study this year um, gave uh, uh, 20 individuals from uh, the great ape species, so bonobos, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, and they gave them the trap tube, um, and then saw if they, then looked to see if they could transfer to the the trap table, or vice versa. They first learned about the trap table, and then they transferred to the trap tube, and they found no evidence of transfer. That even if even though the apes could get really good at this, when you give them a trap table problem, they go back to putting it in the trap all the time. So our crows have really um, shown some, a level of sophistication here that hasn't been shown before.